Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, as always, for now, at least until I know I'm not going to do this anymore, but I'm probably going to do this for a good amount of time, Jeff Malinoff. And with me, once again, is Mark Souza. We're going to be talking about the Monday, our Thursday night football matchup between the Colts and Patriots tonight. We'll be talking about some other things that are happening in the NFL, as well as in, the injury bug, and um, I guess... Some 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 fantasy football stuff, but we'll save that for the some fantasy college fo- stuff too. Some college stuff too. We'll save stuff for the fantasy football podcast on Friday. So if you want to look at fantasy football stuff, make sure you tune in Friday for that. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, Thursday night football matchup: uh, Colts and Patriots. And you just told me, and we just found out that the Colts are uh, have made T. Y. Hilton inactive for this game. Yeah, sounds like he's been ruled out of tonight's matchup. Uh, in addition to starting running back Marlon Mack, starting tight end Jack Doyle, <laughs> and starting offensive lineman Denzel Good, who actually is missing the game for personal reasons. Um, That's a lot of people. Yeah, those those are four key members, and they're all on offense. Poor Andrew Luck is all I have to say for tonight. What do you think about that? You can say it for his whole career. Yeah, they made it to the AFC title game one time, but his kind of his whole career he's been on a bad team. Yeah, and <laughs> not just a bad team, but he's just been getting destroyed by defensive it's lines. His because... fault, his line just doesn't give him enough time to react, and yeah. he's always getting hit from behind. Yeah, they did uh, draft Quentin Nelson from Notre Dame, so they tried at least this time to uh, to get him some help in front of him. So that should one be... guy is not going to change that line. Well, it's definitely not going to change if the other if half the offense definitely is on the start. injury report. I mean, he was a great pickup. I think he was a, we used the top offensive line prospect in, in the in this draft. So. I will say, in my personal opinion, that Quint Nelson was the best, at least interior lineman prospect that I've ever seen. That is a broad and bold statement. Yeah, he was that good in college. See, don't make him the next Tony Mandridge. Do you I will. That I was? will say, I do. I do watch a lot of Notre Dame football games, and Quint Nelson was just a man. Among, it was like he was like an already NFL caliber p- player playing against. Definitely, definite college defensive lineman. So he, I think, will have a great NFL career. But going back to tonight's game, the Colts come into Foxborough, coming again, playing against a Patriots team that is coming off a big win against the Miami Dolphins, where they showed the Dolphins who is still the top dog in the AFC East. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Who knows how long they'll be the top dog for? We talked about this on the sports podcast about this dynasty coming to closely to an end. Um, maybe not for another couple of years, but uh, who knows what's going to happen uh, this year? Again, I think it's still going to be the Patriots taking the crown of the AFC East. That is. Yeah, I would agree with that. I know that Miami had a, a great start, but great stars doesn't make you the best team. Yeah, I see Miami. Miami is an eight and eight team every year. It feels like eight and eight, seven and nine. I sound like a broken record. But how many times have we seen a team start so hot and just end and poorly? I think, and I also think Miami um, benefited from a few things. Uh, they beat the Titans in Week One. Do you remember that? How that game lasted like six hours because of all the, the, the weather. Lightning. Yeah, um, Grant, that's an understandable reason to delay that, though. Oh the yeah, Titans. no, absolutely. But I, but I, I said, think even that was kind of a break that worked in their favor. Like you want to be the home team in that situation when you have a six-hour football game where you have to come back out, go back in the locker room. You don't want to be the team traveling, you know. <laughs> you see what I'm saying I, I there? Yes, but 
Regardless, I think the Dolphins will come back to earth. I think they finish the season between seven and nine wins. Would you kind of agree with that? The Dolphins? Yeah, like seven and nine, seven to nine wins. They have three right now. They're three and one. I can see them going nine and seven. That's a lot. That's a logical estimate. It's a decent. Yeah, that's a decent prediction. Uh, Bills and the Jets probably going to win five, four or five games between the two. Um, between between the, the two? Between the two, probably seven or eight. Eight to ten. So both are going to have a uh, very poor. They both have one win. If I'm right, am I correct there? The Bills, I don't have one win. They, yeah, they're both one and three. So the Bills and the Jets are one and three right now. Would you say they'll combine for eight wins, ten wins? They're at two. Uh. I'll say the Bills go six and ten, and I'll say the Jets go seven and nine. Ooh, under. I'm taking the under. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. Like, I'm trying to think of just. I'm taking the under on both. Do you think the Bills will do worse than six and ten? Yes. Okay. Uh, I say four wins is I, achievable I, I gonna, for the Bills. I was going to move down to three and thirteen. They could. I, 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 you they, think they're going to get the number one pick? I think the Bills are... I mean, we, you have them as your worst team, right? Or worst or second worst? I. They were not my worst. I the Cardinals were your worst. The Cardinals were my worst. The Bills were in your bottom the five. The Bills were my fir- the five of the top bottom five. Okay. I Yeah, I, we'll see. There's a lot of football left. Josh Allen is a rookie. Who knows? Maybe here in the next few weeks, he'll show us why he was a first-round pick and... The Bills will show some life on offense. What do you think? Maybe, possibly. I'm trying to be positive I here think for Bills fans. Dead. <laughs> I'm sorry, Buffalo, but my word. I mean, you had a playoff. You had a playoff appearance last year, first time this century, and which is true. Uh, they didn't make it. They haven't made it since 1999, and that was the uh, miracle in a. Uh, yeah. But they have the Bills Mafia, and they are probably the most intoxicated football fans in the NFL, and I absolutely love those videos. You think videos. it would be the Browns that would be the most intoxicated? I absolutely but love... Boys, uh, but the Bills did go to four straight Super Bowls in the early 90s and lose all four. How many times have you seen a video of somebody pounding a beer and body slamming somebody through a table from a RV? Flaming table. Not from just, an RV. Three, um, and they're Buffalo Bills fans. Every because, week. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm not promoting this behavior, but I am enjoying Don't it. Don't do it on a flaming table like <laughs> so, so many others. If you're going to do it on a table, make sure it's one of those WWE tables that's actually meant to be broken, not ones with metal on the <laughs> bottom of it. So let's, uh, let's bring it back to, um, to the topic here of tonight's game. The Colts, we, we're talking about the AFC East for a minute. The Colts are, as we know, in a very tough division, uh, unlike the Patriots. The AFC South. The Jacksonville Jaguars, the Tennessee Titans, and of course the Houston Texans. Do you think that they need, if they lose this game, would you just say at one and four that their season is over, like in terms of making the playoffs? Mm. Because it's a tough division, the Titans and the Jaguars are kind of running away with it right now, right? Get back to me in a couple weeks. I, I won't say one and four means you're done. I would say once you hit that six loss, then you're in trouble. Well, Tennessee and Jacksonville are both three and one, and the they could potentially be behind both of those teams by by three games um, at the end of this week. So, mm-hmm. the Titans play the Bills. Are you following with me here? I am with you. The Titans play the Bills. Would you say the Titans are going to win that game? They play the Bills, the Buffalo Bills from Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Who? I, mm. So yeah, would you say they're going to win that game? Yeah. Okay. The Titans do have a legitimate shot of winning their division. Yeah, the, the ja- but the, Jag- the Jags is, play a tough game. They play yeah. Kansas City. So but again, not. Um, I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna go down to the last couple of weeks in the season. Okay. Well, for me, I think this is a pivotal game for the Colts. Unfortunately, I think it's a terrible time to have it because they're one and three. This is a. It looks like a fourth loss is heading their way. T.Y. Hilton being out, I mean, that's Andrew Luck's guy. So he, would you say his fourth loss would uh, make playoffs almost impossible? Uh, not for every team, but for this team in this division, yes. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Like if it was the Patriots who were one and four after this week, I'd still think they That's would still win a the division. division. But this division's tough. The Titans and the Jaguars are no joke. If both of those teams win this weekend, they're both legitimate top five teams in the in the um, league. Wouldn't you agree with that? The Titans beat the Jaguars. Let's let's think about that for a minute. Their only loss came to the Dolphins, who have only lost one game. So what we think about the Dolphins, we'll see. But they're not. They're playing well. They yeah, beat, no question they beat about the Eagles. Playing well, but. Uh, do you do you see him continuing being this consistently well throughout the whole season? Well, let's not forget the Titans were a playoff team last year. It, it was probably one of the worst teams making the playoffs. Uh, the Bills were worse than them. No way. The Bills the were worse. Titans were a joke. Okay, so dude. you're telling me last year that the Bills were a better playoff yes. team than the Tennessee Titans. The, ten- the, Ty- the Tyrod Taylor Buffalo Bills were better. I would have the picked Mary- them over the Titans. That you, that Titans team was a joke. They they got so lucky this, against yeah, Kansas City. This opinion of yours is a joke. Are you kidding me? Did you not see how bad the Titans played that whole season? That team was a joke. I don't think they were good, but they were better than the Buffalo Bills. The, I, I don't know about that. You don't know about that? Well, I do. Well, the Bills had more to prove than the Titans. The Titans were there. The Titans were way worse than the Bills. Didn't the Titans? Did you watch? The, did you watch them play at all? Did the Titans win a playoff game last year? Okay, who they play? Did they win a playoff game last year? No, no. Shut your mouth. This is the freaking. This is the. Hey, I'm. Kansas I'm, in, City I'm interested. They they My name terrible. is Mark, and I'm interested in facts. Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> that team has been a choke artist for years. Andy Reid's been a choke artist for years. They didn't run the ball, with Kareem Hunt. They didn't do anything you were supposed to do to win the game. They, had, they heard... were up twenty-one to nothing, <sighs> and they didn't do what you're supposed to at the end of a game to win, as in run the ball, waste clock. But they kept throwing the ball like a bunch of morons, and they. Mm. Did that feel good to get that out? I'm just saying you're wrong on this. Did that feel good? I'm just saying Kansas City. You you were thinking like they beat a great team in Kansas City. Kansas City beat themselves. I didn't that. say that they beat a great team. I said they won a playoff game. Yeah, the Bills had to play the Jaguars. And, Who went to the AFC title game? And, and they lost. That was an elite defense. What are you talking about? <laughs> if if it was the Swift, I'll probably be a different story. The Bills probably could have beaten the Chiefs. All right. Well, I'm right here. You're wrong. But it's okay. It's fine. So let's talk about tonight. Thursday you know, night you football. Can do this. You can do this right now on your own. You're all on your own right now. <laughs> Thursday night football. The Indianapolis Colts playing the Patriots. Julian Edelman is back for New England. I think New England will take this win. I think it will be very easy. It's going to be a tough night for Andrew Luck, missing key offensive players plus offensive linemen. The New England pass rush doesn't accumulate too many sacks, but they do rush the passer at a very high clip, and I expect Luck to be under pressure tonight playing from behind. It's not a good recipe for success, and I think the 10-point spread in this game in favor of the Patriots might not be high enough. Uh, Without T.Y. Hilton, I think so. Uh, there's no other offensive weapon for Luck to throw to, and he has his line is still weak, and I still don't see like this Colts team playing well at all. And how shocked would you be on a scale of one to ten if the Colts won tonight? Honestly, I say seven, because that secondary of the Patriots is still lackluster at, at best. So for reference point, so the people who are listening understand, how shocked were you on a one to ten that the Bills beat the Vikings in Minnesota? Uh, that was a nine. Uh, Okay. Based on how bad that loss was from that was Vikings. a that was, I would say it was shocking. A nine. I I've said this. I, I wouldn't say it was the biggest shocker. Like it was the I've biggest shock, not the biggest, biggest shock, shock I've week. ever seen. Yeah, but I would still say like that was the most surprising. I don't know if I've seen a bigger regular season upset in the NFL, in my opinion, in years. I can't even remember the last time where I was floored by a result. Because not only did Buffalo win that game. They won handily. And they won with a rookie quarterback. No, Sean McCoy. Like, everything was stacked against them. And they went in and they just dominated yeah, everyone thought they were the Minnesota play, Vikings, yeah. a popular Super Bowl pick. Uh, I think that really took the Vikings in a question in a questionable position like are they the Super Bowl team everyone's talking about I still think they are a t- potential Super Bowl appearance but uh it was probably the biggest it's probably going to be the biggest upset like in the season yeah i and they, i would just think- based off of how handily they beat them I mean, I think this would be an upset, of course, but of course you have Andrew Luck. So, like, if you have a good quarterback, then upsets don't seem that big of a deal. It was it was a rookie quarterback's like first appearance. Yeah, it, so. 
And um, yeah, I mean, a lot of things went Buffalo's way in that in that game, but you can't take anything away from them. They came in and they just smacked around a very good football team. So, what's your prediction for tonight? I got thirty-one seventeen. I'm gonna say thirty-one seventeen. Now that we know that Hilton's not playing, thirty-one seventeen Patriots. I'll say thirty-one fourteen. Yeah, I think I like yours more. I I, I said thirty one. I said thirty one fourteen in the sports podcast. I'm sticking with that. I said thirty one twenty on that on that so podcast. You could only manage three points without Ty Hilton. Yeah, but it, it'll feel differently. Like I feel like thirty one to twenty. I wouldn't 20, be surprised if they only scored seven. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be shocked either. But like, doesn't it kind of like? I know it's only three points, but like that a a fourteen point win or eleven point win kind of feels differently. So. I'll say the the Colts are losing by maybe by 20 points for most of the game, but then I see maybe they get a garbage time touchdown to make it look respectable in the box score, but I don't see this being a competitive game. Yeah, I don't see it competitive either. I don't see this as a potential for a um You know game. what's interesting, though, before we go to break? The Four. Patriots are 23rd in offense and 22nd in defense. They're in the bottom half in offense and defense. They get a boost with Edelman coming back, but that's still – that doesn't well, feel – Have you seen them play? They haven't not been playing well at all. Like, they haven't. They got back very, on track. They had a 38-7 to win against the Dolphins, granted. but And they're still before, 22nd. But before then, they still struggled a lot. Yeah. Cool. So we should probably take a quick right, break. Let's take a quick break. When we get back, we'll be talking more about uh, – Anything else to do with the NFL? Probably more about college football. We'll talk this about week. college football. There's some uh, matchups, uh, the top five, not not too many great matchups, but we'll dive into it. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get back to you. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. We've talked about the Thursday night matchup between the Patriots and the Colts. Now we're going to go to college football now. Uh, we have some of the, the top four, top five teams in the nation at the moment are facing some relatively weak teams. Uh, do you see any upsets in this in these top with these top five teams? Uh, probably not. There's nothing, no game that really stands out, I'd say. Uh, maybe if there's any team of the top four, I, we stop at the top four because the matchups are pretty weak. Do you uh, want to give the matchups? Uh, sure. Like the Alabama playing the one in the one win was Arkansas Razorbacks. Like I don't see that being competitive game in the slightest. No, me either. That I think that one's a lock for sure. I mean, obviously, it's a what is it, a thirty-five point? It is a thirty-five point. Uh, I think favorite. that Alabama probably wins by more than thirty-five. If I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you see the number two Georgia playing uh, Vanderbilt, who is three and two, twenty-seven point favorites is Georgia. I don't see an upset in this one either. What about you? No, Georgia's at home. Um, they're going to win that game. Uh, trivia question for you. Go Who's for the most famous quarterback from Vanderbilt? NFL quarterback. Famous quarterback from pretty, Vanderbilt. Pretty decent career in the NFL. How do you know who this is? You looked it up, didn't you? No, I know it. But you I'm know gonna, it by heart? I'm going to look it up just to make sure that I'm right. Okay. But I know that I'm right, if that makes sense. I just like to... I like, you know, uh, I like telling myself that I was right about something. Is he playing right now, or is he retired? He is currently not playing right now. 
currently not playing right now. I don't know if he's actually retired, retired, but he's not in the NFL. Is it Jay Cutler? It is. Okay. <laughs> so it was just how you explained that. I was like, that just sounds like Jay Cutler. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so Georgia, they look like they're going to take care of Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. What's the spread on that one? That one's got to be like 20 something. 27 points. Yeah. Yeah, Vanderbilt. They, 26 you know, and a half. Vanderbilt's 3 and 2. You know, we'll see. Um, we'll see if they can make it a competitive game. Uh, number three, Ohio State is playing. Indiana. Yep. And Ohio State's at home. I think that might be the game of the top four that I could see being a struggle for Ohio State. I still think they'll win, but I don't know because if they'll. Because they're 4 and 1, Indiana, that is. Yeah, I mean. Indiana can play. They, you know who I'm shocked know. about that's like undefeated right now. Kentucky. They're five and zero. Oh. They're ranked thirteenth in the nation. That's a basketball school. Still thirteenth in the nation. It is funny how some of these basketball schools are really good at football now, and then like so sometimes. Yeah, like Duke. I wouldn't say that they're not ranked anymore. So, or I or they're twenty five. Okay. At the most, but. <laughs> Clemson, Wake Forest, uh, any problems there for Clemson? That's the lowest favorite of the top four. like 19-point favorites. Yeah, because Wake Forest them. is at home, so that probably helps. I still see Clemson taking this. I don't see much of a challenge. I think Wake Forest's defense is just terrible. I, I don't know. I They can play offense, but they allow – I mean, they've allowed 32 points a game. Like. Mm-hmm. I just see Clemson as the better team, and they're going to take this one. I don't see any question about that. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, last week, I think there was some better matchups in college football. Um, the one, the one game that really uh, stands out, though, is the number five LSU Tigers going mm-hmm. to Florida take on the Gators. Now, LSU is five. Florida is ranked 22. LSU slight favorite at two and a half. That's a really short, that's small for me. You think LSU should be favored a little bit more? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think I I have uh, have Florida winning. I think they'll win outright. They'll just win outright. Yeah, I, I think that if you were betting on this game, the two and a half, just punt the two and a half. Take the money line. I mean... I don't know. College football game. I, I don't like. If it's a, if it's under three, just take the money line, right? I mean, just take them to win out, right? How many games end in a one or two point win? Like, not very many. It yeah. can happen. I don't see this as like competitive as anyone, as a lot of people say it is. Really? So, yeah. Re, is there a reason why? Or do you just think that LSU is just so good that. Do you see like a flaw in Florida or something? Like, I, I see a two touchdown victory margin. Okay. I think that we should make like a friendly wager on that because I don't see that at all. Two touchdowns? I, I'm not saying like that's my, that's 100% going to happen. I'm just saying like it's a possibility. That's what I think like is a good chance. Okay. I think it's going to be a fun game. That's probably the game that I'm most interested in seeing. I hope that it's uh, attractive football because a lot of times when these teams play, it can be a little ugly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Especially if it's in Florida. Yeah. So Swampy, humidity. It's supposed fun. to be super hot. It's a noon. Oh, it's going it's it's to be terrible weather. It's a 3 o'clock Eastern game. It's supposed to be super That's gonna be hot. That's going to be brutal. So that should have an effect. Maybe we'll see some players cramping up in that game. Uh, obviously, you know, teams will take measures to to stop that from happening. But as we know, playing in that humidity, playing in oh, that it's, heat. It's, it's going to get gross. Okay, so do you you got LSU? Give me like a, a score. What do you kind of see? You said two touchdowns. If you had a guess, twenty eight to fourteen. Twenty eight fourteen. That's that's a, that's a pretty good guess. Yeah, I will say Florida wins thirty seven thirty eight. Actually, thirty eight thirty four in overtime. 38 to 34 in overtime. Yeah. How LSU, many overtimes? LSU kicks a field goal. How Florida many wins overtimes? With a touchdown. Did you do you have a do you have an all like a sports almanac from like 25 like the future here? 
you, you just have to find out. I mean, I did get the um, the wild card game between the A's and the Yankees wrong, so maybe uh, maybe my prediction here will be terrible. Maybe, maybe. Um, but any other like games you think are are, are lovely people at home should watch? Uh, yeah. I mean, we just talked about maybe the most intriguing matchup of the NCAA current top five, but number six, Notre Dame. They will travel to play the Hokies from Virginia Tech. It'll be what on the road. Hokey? Yeah, I'm not, I'm uh, not is sure. It, is it short for Hokey Pokey? I would assume no. I'm going to think it. Okay. Sorry, people of Virginia Tech, but I think it's... I think your team's name is after the Hokey Pokies, and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, so Notre Dame's coming off their their no, big win. I think it's a wolf, isn't it? Man, I don't Hokey. know. <laughs> but let's talk about Notre Dame coming off their big win against Stanford, where they crushed them 38-17. Um, unexpected. A lot of people didn't see that happening, but Notre Dame really took control of that game in the second half, put Stanford away. What do you think about Virginia Tech? They're coming off a big win against Duke. They won 31-14, previously ranked number 22, Duke. They did lose Old Dominion, like we talked about earlier. Do you think Virginia Tech can give the Irish, the fighting Irish, trouble here? Possibly. I'm not saying they're definitely going to. So Notre Dame is a favorite by 6.5, basically a touchdown. Would you agree with that? I would, I would even say just make it just move it up to 7. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think Notre Dame will take care of business. Uh, big momentum, I think, last week with that win against Stanford. They really, really dominated that second half. I think they'll build on that momentum. I think they'll take care of Virginia Tech. I still don't think they'll make the college football playoff. FYI, because you don't think they'll make the college football playoff. I think they'll stumble. They always find a way to stumble. Uh, they overachieve and then they underwhelm, in my opinion, mm-hmm. with Brian Kelly at coach. So I still think that will happen. Okay. Well, um, it's still a possibility. But I think they do win by at least a touchdown this week. At least a touchdown. So no last second field goal or anything for you? No, uh, I think it'll be comfortable. What about the. I'll say 10 points. Can we talk about Texas Oklahoma nineteen against number we'll wait, seven? We'll wait tomorrow for that for the uh, for when we're doing all the all the games. So the Red River rivalry. We will talk about that tomorrow on a, a Friday's podcast, fr- football podcast, and the sports podcast. So is that likely. the pool to bring people back? Like to find us tomorrow for the Red River rivalry. Yeah, as well as uh, the other top matchups. There's Texas Oklahoma, that's a fun one. We yeah. just saw. We just we're, saw we're that. We're not going to talk about. No, it. we're not. We're not. But I like to say that Texas Oklahoma is similar to me as Red Sox Yankees. Well, that we're getting in baseball, maybe like a another uh, very yeah, hot yeah, I rivalry. Can see, I can see that, but not as not as talented as it used to be. Yeah, Especially I mean, Texas. it's up to Texas, right? Like it's. Yeah. Oklahoma's been holding their own. Sometimes it used to be like the one seed and two or three facing each other. Like, yeah, Texas has has been on a decline for a few years, while Oklahoma's been doing gradually very well. coming back. Yeah. So, is there any other college football game we can talk about? Or, um, I think we should take a short break. We can take a short break, and then what will we chat about when we come back? Uh, we can talk about the injury bug and see. We'll talk how. about the injury bug in the NFL and players coming back from suspension. All right, we can do that. We'll get good right on that when we get back to you right after this break. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
And welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. We just talked about the Thursday night football matchup between the Patriots and the Colts. Then we talked about the college football uh, and some some of the some of the top ranked teams playing each other. And now we're going to be talking about the injury bug because that has been a big, large, blood sucking bug for this definitely like next these first four weeks of football. Don't you think so? Yeah, absolutely. This looks like the first real week in the NFL where there's injuries kind of spread throughout a lot of questionable tags. And as we know, when the NFL kind of changed that whole rule about the injury designations and everybody's questionable, it makes it tougher uh, for people uh, to, to, uh, to kind of predict who will play and who won't play. It kind of makes it where you have to follow... Uh, certain beat writers for NFL teams to get the latest on players practicing, players spending time with the medical staff and whatnot. Yeah, but like they're just—it's it, been a while since I've seen this many injuries throughout the first four weeks of a season. Yeah, and, and you know tonight's matchup between the Colts and the Patriots—we talked about it. The Patriots are relatively healthy, uh, but T.Y. Hilton—he won't be playing. Uh, you have another offensive lineman who won't be playing, but you you see Marlon Mack still injured for the Colts. It's putting a damper um, on tonight's game. And as we look uh, across the NFL, I mean, Mar uh, Joe Mixon for the Bengals, he could be back this week. And his backup, Giovanni Bernard, is actually hurt too. So both are questionable to play. Sounds about right. What do you think, Mixon? Do you think he'll play? He's, I mean, he just had a knee procedure done two weeks ago, um, three weeks ago, I believe. I say they're going to hold off on him until, like, week, the probably either next week or the week after. I'm not saying put him in right away. I'm saying take your time with him. Yeah, we'll see what the Bengals do. Um, it'll be interesting. You well, know they don't want to throw him into the game right away and risk him further injuring himself. Yeah, and the Colts, I forgot to mention Jack Doyle. He's also injured uh, in Houston. Lamar Miller, Will Fuller, those guys are, are hurt. Uh, they could possibly play. Jarvis Landry and Antonio Callaway um, are banged up for the Browns. I mean, it's uh, it's getting a little, a little brutal out there. It's getting almost ridiculous. Leonard Fournette for Jacksonville. I mean, he's... And even, like, before this week, it's, like, Jimmy Garoppolo's ACL injury. And even with the 49ers have been hitting with a huge injury bug with, like, Jeremy McKinnon, also their big running back they signed for Minnesota out of free agency. He and Torres ACL. And then you look at other teams and just, like, uh, Tyler Efert from uh, Cincinnati with his severe broken leg or ankle, excuse me. And yeah. And hor horrifying injury. And it just... There's so many guys just... Leonard Fournette, we, their coach just said, um, you know, Doug Marone just said that he's out indefinitely, like with his hamstring. He so, know how long. yeah, I mean, he even said it could be two weeks, it could be five weeks. He doesn't know. Four of the five offensive linemen for Jacksonville are actually injured and like, questionable. The NFL has been like so like protecting oriented, it feels like, and yet guys are still getting hurt at a pretty rapid pace. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's pretty bad. Yeah, and then for the Chiefs, um, Sammy Watkins, you know, he injured his hamstring. He's been a guy that's been banged up for most of his career. I think he might play on on Sunday uh, against the Jaguars, but I wouldn't be surprised if they are cautious with that hamstring, considering how good they've been so far. It's not a must win for them. Yeah, but the entry list goes on and on and on. Like it's 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 is it it's absurd. Marshawn Lynch is a little uh, beat up. He had a he ran really hard in that game against the Browns. Um, so we'll see. I'm I'm sure he'll play. He's a tough guy. He he's probably played through countless countless minor injuries in his career. So um, we'll see. We'll see what what happens. Do you there. think these injuries are like? Do you, are you concerned about how many injuries there are? Yeah, and I think I mentioned it in the first part of this is how the injury designation in the NFL, I mean, everybody's questionable. It used to be questionable or probable, right? So, yeah. and doubtful. And doubtful was the other one. So, there were four stages. There was probable, questionable, doubtful, and out. 
those are the four. And now it's just questionable or out for the NFL. So it makes it tough to know uh, it, how truly players uh, will – like Chris Carson last week for the Seahawks was – supposed to play and then last minute they're like no he's not playing so it makes it tough especially if you're a fantasy football fan i mean obviously oh, that's absolutely for, when you see questionable you're like i don't yeah, know if you're just he's gonna be out or is he gonna be in like you gotta give me more information and you gotta click the little the little thing the little news and and then like you're like oh that's not good enough i gotta go to twitter you well, know like there's like he didn't <laughs> practice he might he's thinking about practicing tomorrow's like that's not giving me any information Ezekiel Elliott is a big name to look for. He's banged up. Uh, Jerry Jones said that he will play this week, but um, he did he did practice in full yesterday, which is nice to see. That's a good sign as the Cowboys head into uh, this weekend's game against the Houston Texans. Uh, the Eagles' backfield is banged up. Corey, Corey Clement and Darren Sproles did not practice. Uh, Ajayi has been banged up, as we know. Um, yeah, it, it's starting to. It, you look at every team, and it seems like there's some big injury news, or at least concerns heading into the weekend. There's always concerns. What about like um, Dalvin Cook? They he was on a pitch count, quote unquote, last week for the Vikings. Uh, he so that he wouldn't aggravate his hamstring, but. Um, he said he's still not 100%. Those are his words. I think they play the Vikings uh, this, or excuse me, they play the Eagles because they are the Vikings this weekend. I think they'll be cautious with, with him again. I think so too. He's coming off that ACL last year. I just think that they want to get him right. Everyone's playing cautious, and I understand why. It just, I think it's hurting the sport in a lot how many injuries there are. Because now you're putting in like third stringers and fourth stringers and practice squad players. Yeah, and I'm looking at um, Devontae Freeman. He's qu- questionable to be back. Uh, he practiced in the limited. Who do you think is limited. injured the most? Like, if you pick a position that's injured the you're most. Running back. Running back? Yeah. Probably. You're probably right on that. Just because. quarterback is hurt often, too? Uh, I would say at a much l- lesser rate than running backs. Because oh, running, backs... running back, but I'm just saying, like, what do you think? Obviously, I feel like the quarterback has more of an impact when he's injured compared to the, when the running back's injured. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarterback. I mean, that's why the rules are like they are in the NFL. Like, it's why you can't touch a quarterback, you know, because mm-hmm. we, how many times do teams just have awful backups? Well, the guy tore his ACL trying not to lay his whole body weight on the quarterback and Derek Carr. Remember that game? That the was, Dolphins yeah, Raiders? that was really unfortunate. That, that should have put an ending to these, uh, putting up these rules or enforcing these rules a little too much about roughing the passer. How are you supposed to tackle someone without putting your full body weight on them? I don't know. Like, you're at full speed. You're supposed to do your job, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to slightly, like, roll away from them as you're tackling them. Just, like, I don't understand. Like, you're not taught that. Do you think that... um, See, I kind of think that the reason why players, especially NFL players, get injured so often... It seems to be that there's a lot of soft tissue injuries, and I just think that they're overworked in terms of the weight room, like the gym stuff, and I think that they don't do enough, like, flexibility-type training. So, yoga. Yeah, absolutely. I love yoga, by the way. I am probably the biggest proponent of that that you'll find. That I'll find? You don't know my life. (laughs) I love yoga, and I'm a little bit older than you. And I'll tell you uh, a decade. I'll tell you when you. I, I hate to sound like you know, get off my lawn here or whatever, but when Back you in my day, yeah, when you get to my <laughs> age. <laughs> but when you get to my age, um, and you like go play soccer, go play basketball, Who or do are anything, you? <laughs> I guarantee you, you will find yoga. You'll do it. You might think it's dumb. You might think it's weird. Sorry. You might think that your movements aren't that great, but you'll find out the next day how great it was. Uh, You just aged right before my eyes. Yeah, I just saw some gray hairs come. Uh, I got a few right now. (laughs) You don't have to look far. Oh, trust me. I have a brother who's uh, turned 30. I think they just turned 32. I should know. But uh, I, I'm blanking at the moment, but he has a lot more great You have a brother who just turned 30? You don't know if he did. No, 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 no. Like, I, I, his exact age. It's 31 or 30, 
No, it's 32. Okay, it's 32. You, you at least know he's at least 30. Okay. No, he's at least 30. He has two kids. But uh, like in 32, he has more gray hairs than I think so, my dad so, does. <laughs> By the way, Steven, I love you. So <laughs> s- speaking of running backs who are not 30 years old, but her, Devontae Freeman, he could be back this week. Um, and Coleman, Tevin Coleman. Well, we the rails, didn't we? <laughs> Tevin Coleman is beat up uh, to Greg Olson's trying to but get back. Honestly, with the Falcons, they don't use their running game as often as they should. Well, um, they're you know, I mean, they're a passing team, but yeah, you're right. But like even with Kyle Shanahan, like Freeman was a pretty good running back. Like he put up yeah, some good numbers. Good. Like Shanahan knew how to use the running backs in the passing scheme, and that utilized in the running scheme. I mean, look at Brad Breeder right now, or in Alfred Morris. They're playing pretty well, just all things considered. And um, I think that just—I think it shows how much of the loss Kyle Shanahan was to the Falcons. I know, like Matt Ryan has had rough uh, times when he's first year with a new offensive coordinator, but Kyle Shanahan made him into an NFL MVP. And losing a guy that that helped you get to that point is going to be a huge detriment to the team. Yeah, I agree. But I think what Kyle Shanahan did was the best decision for him, getting a head coaching job, getting full control. Him and the GM, John Lynch, have been working really well together, some people say, in the in the front offices of San Francisco. Just when you when you are starting a team, like you're starting a rebuilding process like the 49ers did, you want a GM and a coach and a head coach to work together or just have a bond where they're both in it for the with each other and starting off exactly the same day kind of thing. So mm-hmm. it was the right decision for Kyle Shannon to move, but it put a huge factor onto the Falcons uh, and how they're struggling on offense and how Julio Jones hasn't scored a touchdown in a few weeks. Yeah, Ridley's been getting all the touchdowns basically in the passing game. Um, I expected really to do pretty well with this Falcons team. He went to the perfect team to go to, all things considered. With Julio on the other side, he'll get more opportunities. Because usually when you're drafted in the first round as a running back, you're going to be looked at as the one as the number one receiver. But fortunately, he didn't have to go to number one. He was the number two. He's the number two receiver, right. and he's excelling quite well. So we could see Devontae Freeman's return boost the Falcons' running game and maybe their their Absolutely. ability to score touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, NFC West injuries. Um, I mean, we can do a whole segment <laughs> with the 49ers, but uh, the Seahawks are getting Chris Carson back. Um, KJ Wright still isn't going to play. He hasn't played this season yet. Um, but the 49ers have Staley, Mike McGlinchey, and Weston Richburg, all three offensive linemen, all dealing with knee injuries and all did not How practice. How injuries in the AFC West? I mean, West he has a key to leave Marquise Peters, too, with the Rams, as well as, like... Sherman and uh, Goodwin also didn't practice, so... They're... We all know about the 49ers injury woes, but just like, and then adding that with the other NFC West teams. Larry like Fitzgerald list, is also hurt, but he's expected to play. It, the list can go on and on and on and on and on. You can literally go hours talking about the injuries in the NFC West alone. Yeah, so with that being said, we kind of did a little rundown there. Let's talk about players returning from suspension. Julian Edelman, of course, will be the first one to come back since his team, the New England Patriots, play tonight. Julian Edelman, uh, do you think he is the boost that the Patriots offense needs? Ranked 22nd, in, 23rd actually in the NFL in total yards. Do you think that he is the player that this offense needs back? I think so. I mean, the we lo- we already looked at it. You said the New England Patriots like 20th or 22nd in total offense, correct? Or something of that Yeah, matter. 23rd. And... With Edelman, I think that brings another offensive weapon into this team, and which is needed absolutely for for the Patriots. And with Gronkowski being covered, double covered almost every play, and Josh Gordon just getting used to this offense, I think Edelman's is can only bring positive to to, to this team. Yeah, it, it can't get it can't he can't do anything negatively. We know that Tom Brady likes to use a short passing game to set him up, set his team up for manageable second and third downs. That's why they throw the ball a lot to James White out of the backfield. They mm-hmm. use him as basically a, a wide receiver that lines up next to Brady, mm-hmm. um, and they like to get him in space. So Edelman's kind of the same player, the slot receiver. They put him in motion a lot, so... Maybe he will take some pressure off of guys like Gronkowski and, of course, Josh Gordon, who just joined the team. Maybe he gets a little bit more comfortable. But it, I think uh, Brady will welcome back that comfortable receiver that it's he loves. It's a security blanket. Yeah, and they're they're good buddies. So 
It can only mean good things, right? Yeah. Who else is coming back from suspension? Mark Ingram for the Saints. That's going to be a huge factor. Him and Kamara coming back together, that's a, that's probably the most dangerous one-two running back combo in the league. And only good things can – positive things for Kamara in this one, definitely, and Breeze and that offense. It will take away some touches for Kamara, but I think it will keep him fresher throughout Kamara's the season. I think still going to get most of the touches, though. I'm thinking like 60-40, maybe even 70-30. Yeah, we'll because see. Because once a guy comes back from suspension, he's still going to be rusty and still going to be not like in the bet. He's not going to be in his one hundred percent field shape. What's really nice for the Saints is that you can play both of them on the field at the same time, which and be a nice combo. You don't have to like don't like for the Wildcat. For, well, for the Falcons, there's not really like Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman. I don't really feel like you put them both on the field at the same time. They're not the same player. But yeah, that team's a one back format. Alvin so. Kamara leads the NFL in receiving right now. Like, That's let's think incredible. about that. You can put him as a slot receiver. You can spread him out wide and keep Ingram next to Drew Brees, and that creates a lot of problems. I would keep both of them next to Drew Brees, do that two, uh, two running back set formation, right. shock formation, and have them. And you can easily do some easy play action stuff and still get some good positive yards by throwing it to the other running back. There are a lot of options. You can imagine a time. You can imagine plays where, like you said, let's say they line up with Breeze with Ingram on one side and Kamara next to Breeze on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then you motion Kamara out wide the opposite side of where Michael Thomas is. And now defenses have to cover have to take a look at two receivers on either side that are dangerous plus they can just turn around and hand the ball to ingram for six or seven up the middle yeah there's so many options with ingram coming back and again i think this is only a positive for everyone on that offensive side and even Kamara, because he's gonna get those more of those opportunities to make breakout runs rather than being the guy that they know they're gonna run the ball with or they know they're gonna pass to him with ingram on the other side of him or mm -hmm. taking up most of those snaps, he's going to have more opportunities um, to make plays. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the Colts, Robert Turbin, running back, is coming back. Um, I mentioned him because Marlon Mack is hurt for the Colts, and they don't really have – they have two rookie running backs in Jordan Wilkins and Naheem Hines. Do you think Robert Turbin um, – has a chance to be the featured back during this time. He's probably going to be a third down back at the first and see what he, how he does and go from there. Yeah, he has an opportunity. We'll see. Um, I wouldn't put a rookie running back at the at the third down back spot, so I think Turbin's going to take that third down back spot. So a couple defensive players that are notable who are coming back from suspension. David Irving from the Dallas Cowboys, a strong defensive tackle. The Cowboys already pose a very, very good pass rush. Do you think David Irving coming back, especially in a week where they play the te the Texans, might have the worst offensive line in the NFL? They're definitely up there. Could this help Dallas boost them for this uh, at least this Sunday? I it couldn't hurt. Like he can't make it worse. Yeah, he's a he's a good Unless player. Unless he tries to hurt other his teammates, I don't <laughs> see. I don't see it. Uh, making it a, a more of a problem for for the his team and his teammates yeah yeah he's a good player we'll see what, what kind of he's impact a he has. he's a benefactor that's for sure uh cincinnati Bengals. they welcome back vontae's perfect oh that guy yeah so when he's not doing incredibly stupid things on the field he's actually a pretty good football player but that but he does a lot of stupid things targets guys make cheap shots guys yeah but you know his teammates love him they say that he's like another coach on the field again when he's not doing when he's not losing his head being a head hunter yeah when he's not losing his head lo losing We're control of his emotions head off. yeah so the Bengals could use him they play miami now Bengals defense has been struggling they they have allowed 57 percent of third downs to be converted which is last in the nfl so is perfect to percent 57 percent of the time the Bengals get a first down converted on them on third down that's that's not good not good so do you think he can uh be the boost that the defense needs at least to be a little bit more respectable in that stat and maybe in total on defense i can see him definitely playing a uh, key role um in certain uh, certain short passing uh attempts by the other team on third downs so if he if he doesn't continuously aim for guys then he could do he could do great things with the Bengals. i know 
So Jimmy Smith is a notable returning player from suspension. Baltimore Ravens, best cornerback. Now the Ravens have the number four defense in the NFL. However, getting him back, it's uh, it looks like it's pretty good timing because they do, here in the next few weeks, these are the quarterbacks that the they play. Yeah, you ready? It, okay, go for it. The quarterbacks that the Ravens will play in the next few weeks Drew Brees, Patrick Mahomes, Matt Ryan, Philip Rivers, Cam Newton, and Ben Roethlisberger. So, ouch, 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 so ouch. So, how's that for timing, though, to get your best cornerback back? Yeah, but he's probably like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so it looks like he'll be in the starting lineup against the Cleveland Browns this week. So, he'll have an opportunity to play against a rookie quarterback before he gets thrown into the fire to face. Guys like Drew Brees, Philip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Patrick Mahomes, Cam Newton, and, of course, Ben Roethlisberger. There's a couple Hall of Fame quarterbacks in there and a couple up-and-coming young quarterbacks in there. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to have to stop you right there. We're going to take a short break. When we get back, we we'll can we can continue about this and talk about any other news in the NFL we want to discuss. And we'll be right back right after this. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. And welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. We've talked about the Thursday night football matchup between the Colts and Patriots. We've talked about the injury bug. Now we're going to talk about the top top five defenses and top five worst defenses in the league, which we're going to have fun with that. Um, right now, the number one defense in yards per game in the league right now is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're averaging 259 yards per game. They're, they're allowing. That's pretty darn good. for. You're going to let me answer the next four, right? Yeah. But I'm saying number one is yeah. is probably the biggest topic at the moment. Yes. Yeah, what a great defense they have, continuing from last year. You you see them staying up there. Oh, Lisa. absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't, they don't look like slowing down. Yeah, they have a great great defense all around: corners, linebackers, safeties, mm-hmm. defensive line that can pressure the quarterback. It's just a well built defense. Yeah. All right, who's number two? Number two best defense in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yards per game as of right now. Yards per game in the NFL. Man. Um, You're not going to get it. Number two. Best. Guaranteed not going to get it. Uh, gosh. I am going to go with. It's, it can't be the Rams. No, it's not. It is the Baltimore Ravens. They're averaging 275 yards per game. So that is the second best. What do you think about that? Very good defense. You can always expect the Ravens did you, to... What, did you, were you thinking about Baltimore? They about were... Baltimore? Yeah, they were a team that I was going to say my top five. But I did not, I did not you know, um, think that they were that, that high. high. Um, I will say that... I think that game against Buffalo really boosted their stats up a tad. Yeah, uh, definitely. And they get Jimmy Smith back, their best corner. So this defense should continue to be a solid uh, defense, especially if the offense continues to move the ball well like they have been recently, uh, ball-controlled style offense. So, um, yeah, I look for the the Ravens' defense to maintain another year of consistent play. Okay, who's number three? Uh, I think it's the Redskins. It is the Redskins, so 278 yards per game. I had a feeling you already looked that up. Yeah. That somehow. I didn't look it up, but I knew. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Fine, I'll, I'll I'll say you cheated still. Okay. Uh, because I doubted you would have gotten that if you didn't have the information. Sure. Um, but all right, number four. Who do you got for number four? I'll say the Bears. Are they up there? They are two ninety four yards a game. Okay. Yeah. They. Um. I mean, they've been. I mean, the addition of Khalil Mack. I mean, let's talk about that right now. He's my defensive player of the year as of today. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you on that one. Doesn't he have a strip sack in every single game so far? At least that or a, f- or a forced fumble. Yeah, he he's just been everything that the Bears expected for him, at least through the first four games. Mm-hmm. All right. Who is the fifth best defense? Uh, You're not going to get this one. I think I might get it. All right. Tennessee Titans. No. Was that close? Are they up there? Go more south. Uh, Houston? Almost there. Dallas? Ding, 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 ding. It is the Dallas Cowboys. 306 yards per game average. Um, That is pretty darn impressive, to say the least. Uh, the thing is with that is that they're the lowest team with 300 yards. They're like... Uh, there are a bunch of teams with over 300 yards averaging, and they're the lowest with 306. But still the best defense is Jacksonville. I don't think that was any question. Um, yeah. No, the Cowboys defense, I think we knew going into this year that that would be their um, their best chance at getting back to the playoffs is with a dominant defense and then with an offense that can move the ball efficiently, maybe not score in bunches, but run the ball, control the clock. And then get after the quarterback on the defensive end. Now they get David Irving back for their defensive line rotation. That's got to just boost that even further. Um, I think that they have a good matchup defensively this week as they face a Texans offense that has trouble protecting Deshaun Watson. Okay, granted. Now let's go more fun. Let's go the worst. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you, I have the... Worst five offenses or five defenses in the NFL. Okay, go for it. Oh, so I got to guess the fifth one, the fifth worst? Yeah. Did you already look these up? N- no. Okay. I, 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 we'll see. I, if well, you do we were, good, I, we'll we were, I was on the sets where they had all this, but I barely saw who was on the bottom. So these are the top five, or excuse me, the top five worst. So the bottom five defenses in the NFL by yards. Go ahead. Number five. Okay, can I just, okay, number five. Um, San Francisco? No. Really? Are they in the top five? Mm, bottom five? No, they're not. Wow, that's they're not. they did not make to the me. list. That's actually kind of shocking to me. All right, um, give me one more guess. Um, let's see. If Who's you get cool? one of the teams, I'll tell you where they rank in here. Okay, uh, Kansas City. Kansas City is the worst. Really, they're the worst. They're the they're the num- they're the number thirty two ranked defense by yards in the NFL as of today. What is it, like four hundred and fifty yards or something? Uh, I. Stopped looking it up, to be honest with you, but it's pretty bad. Um, hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. 452 yards. Oh, that was close. Uh, but uh, that's actually kind of shocking. So you you got that one. I knew they were bad. I didn't know they were that give bad. Give me another bottom five team in uh, your estimation. Gotta go Atlanta Falcons. They, are the, they barely made the list, so they would have been the first team. They are the fifth worst defense by yards as of today. That makes sense. In the NFL. Um. Do you see Kansas City or Atlanta improving upon these numbers by season's end? Like, do you to think be honest, be in not the... Kansas City. I think yeah, this is gonna be their not Kansas goal. City. Atlanta has Maybe. a little bit more promise because they have some defensive play, but they lost. I mean, Keanu Neal is on IR. Like, they lost some players. All right, all right. Let me guess number four now. The fourth worst. Um. All right. Is it? Is there an NFC team in this? <laughs> there is. Oh well, wow, okay. Uh, let's that narrows it down. You need number four, number three, number Green two. Bay. No. Really. They do not make the bottom five. Okay. Um. How about let's go to like I'm not looking anything up. This is off the top of my head. Just how bad I've seen teams play. Um. Detroit. Nope. Hmm. Okay. One more guess for me for four, and then you can. I tell think me this is. Four. I think this should be really easy. So think of teams that have played in high scoring games. Oakland. No. 
All right, one more guess, and then you can tell me who's number four. Um, Teams that have played in high-scoring games. For Buffalo. No. Really? Really. Okay, I give up. Who's number four? Cincinnati Bengals. They weren't in that high scoring. It was like 20 points or something like they that. They just won 37-36. Well, that was against a high-powered offense in the Falcons. I wouldn't say that's like they're making them the worst. I mean... I still wouldn't even consider them up there. They're giving up 419 yards a game and 28 points per game. That's pretty bad. They have faced very good offensive teams, though. Sure, I agree with that. So do you think that Cincinnati, especially now that they're going to have Vontae's oh, perfect you know, back? Okay, can I guess someone that I think I definitely know is in there? Go ahead. High scoring, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, yes. I thought so. Tampa Bay is number two, so they're the second worst defense by yards through week four. Because they've given up a lot of yards. Yeah, all their games have been... High uh, scoring. All their games actually have... They've given up a lot and of points. And 48 points to Chicago, yeah. And going with that, you could also think of Pittsburgh as one of those teams. There you They're go. They're up there too, aren't they? There's your top five. Wow, really? Gentlemen. The Pittsburgh's up there. We're going worst to best in terms of the five worst. Kansas City is your worst. You know, I, Tampa I, Bay, I, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and I ending knew, it with I knew Atlanta. Pittsburgh was bad on defense. I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah. But I think that's all that we have time for. But uh, do you see anyone uh, taking over the number one defense from Jacksonville? Not by season's end. I mean, I think we'll see some mm-hmm. fluctuation. But there is a defense that I like to talk about for a second that I think will be good okay. um, right before we leave. Minnesota Vikings. Their defense has been atrocious through the first four weeks. It might not be a good game for them this weekend, but I think that team is too talented and too well coached to be held down for the whole season. I would expect them to be in the top 10 by season's end. Would you agree? Yeah, I can see that. Um, they were like the top, them and Jacksonville were top two defenses last year. Well, we'll see. They, they've been struggling, but we'll see. But that is all the other time for this week today. Join us tomorrow. We'll talk more about the Sunday night games. Uh, that will be happening over the weekend. And we will get back to you tomorrow. We will see you then. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.